year 2018 and uh, it's great to be alive and I'm sure that one person we've all been waiting to hear from is Christabel Eke. She's a fine Ghanaian actress. She's been off her scenes a long while and it's 2018 so I want to catch up with her. We get to know what exactly is happening with her, what we should be looking up to in 2018. You know, what's different, you know, maybe lessons from last year and blah, 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 you know, she gets to tell us. So, it's my time with Christabel Eke. You want to join me, have a conversation with her. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing well and I am Ghanaian Nigerian. <laughs> yes. So, Ghanaian Nigerian, but we want to claim you as a Ghanaian actress. Okay. <laughs> yes. So, Ghanaian Nigerian origin, yes. but we want you as a Ghanaian actress. Okay. Otherwise, if you don't state it clear now, when the time comes and there's something that is for Ghanaian, they'll say you are Nigerian, so they shouldn't give you. Because I'm Ghanaian Nigerian. Okay. Yes. So, Ghanaian Nigerian actress. Yes. Okay, that's mm -hmm. fine. So, Ghanaian oh, Nigerian. Just an actress. Just, just an actress. Yes, okay. an actress. Anyway, so how are you doing? Uh, uh, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you too. It's been a very long time. You look different, like you look trimmed, you look like you've done something to yourself all this while since you weren't missing. Tell me. Really? Okay, trimmed as in my weight? Yes. Okay, maybe. It's just like your cheeks have gone down. Really? Yeah, and I've been eating the whole Christmas, so I'm just surprised. So you didn't work out, you know, from the last time I saw you, I think that you look trimmed. Yes, I didn't work out, just uh, maybe the diet. Okay. How did last year go for you? It went very well because I had the chance to just experiment and be myself. Mm. Yes. When you say you experiment and to be yourself, what was that really? We all know what all that. I just um, took a break, lived my life, did something else apart from just being on TV and acting movies. Yes, yeah, just mingling, um, being normal. Mm. Yes. You don't want to share that something else with us, but you know that um, there's a lot to talk to you about. But let's start with how everyone in your family is doing. Everyone in my family is doing very well. Yes. Everyone is fine. I'm asking because, you know, last year we had some pictures surfacing online and we, we didn't understand what really happened. Maybe, yes, people had been speaking on your behalf all this while. You're here, you want to tell us, you know, what really happened? What did you go for a photo shoot? Was it supposed to reveal something new we didn't know? Blah, blah, blah. What was it? Oh, I just took some pictures, but my family didn't know those pictures were coming out. So it surprised them as well. And then um, some some comments were out there so they just jumped and defended me but what, what were the pictures for was it for a project what project was it or was it out of the fact that okay i'm an actress let me go experiment you know with my buddy what was it really for it was for me yes now, if you say it was for you was it a private picture that got licked or <laughs> it was for me i took them that's all was it for public? Was it for the public? You took them, yes, we know, but was it for the public? Or was it a picture you took for you took for Kips and you ended up in the public? I think it's a new year. We, we just won't yes, talk so about that. Which respect, and then we'll move yeah. on to the new year. Let's just move because on to the new year. Know, like, you know, before people would really know, understand what you have for this year, mm -hmm. you're also concerned about the things that happened last year and want to really understand you and appreciate your talents. And so that's what I'm asking is, I know it's in the past, but there are people who still have that question in their mind, like what's really, what's the picture out there? Wow. Yes, about. Well, I've always wanted to do it. I wanted to do it, I think in 2016 on my birthday, but a friend discouraged me and then I took a chance and did it in 2017, and that's it. So it was for the public? Anyone who sees it. <laughs> because I'm, I'm asking because I know that during that time I spoke to you on the phone and I asked you whether it was a leaked picture, whether somebody had uh, hacked into your Instagram and all that, and you said, oh no, that you wanted to see God. You wanted God to be revealed to you. And I was wondering, you know... That wasn't the reason for the picture. You asked me why I unfollowed everyone yes. on my Instagram. Oh, so you remember and that Yes, and that was before the pictures. And I had unfollowed everyone before the pic my pictures. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to unfollow people so I can just post what I want, be myself without having to, you know, 
have influence from people I follow or yeah, people who follow me. So I just want that freedom to do what I want. That's why I unfollowed people. And you asked me, why don't I want to follow people? And I just kept it short and said, I would rather follow God. Yes, yes, and not follow people. Yes. So you remember that conversation very well. I don't know about you. About you. Yes. That, that's great, but I'm um, really why I'm saying you remember the conversation very well. Is that a lot of people felt that after I spoke to you, they felt that there was something actually wrong. They took that interview. You were the only one I spoke to, that's true. and they took that interview, and then a lot of um, interpretations. And I just decided to keep quiet after that interview. And I saw a lot of different headlines. And actually, the next thing is, um, lo, let me just not even go into that. But I saw different different headlines. But I remember it was just you I spoke to. I didn't do any interview again because I didn't want to. And then the last interview I did was with Abeku Santana, and that's it. Yes. The people felt that there was something wrong with you psychologically. It's because of the environment we are in. Actually, it was something I've always wanted to do because I felt like it's. Um, I wanted to do it. But I had my fears, I had my inhibitions. What would my family think? What would my parents think? What would my fans think if I went to nude like that or something like that? So I wanted to just deal with that, you understand? But the environment in which I, it came into, like people know me here, the way they took it, even the laws which I wasn't aware of, you know, took it that it's not legal and all that. So. It came as a surprise to me as well, but it's just something that I did to step out of my comfort zone. Yes, yeah, so to step out of that zone that kept me. Like, because I'm an actress from beauty pageant to modeling to acting, a few people must have seen my nude, my nakedness on set and all that. Some actresses, some colleagues, and all that. But I still had that fear of my body. But ever since I did that, I'm just okay the way I am, you understand? I don't feel the need to change my body or to, because everyone has seen the way it is. And regardless of your opinion, it is what it is. And I'm living with it. Not, naturally, I didn't even think this would be news. I was shocked myself. I had to be indoors for like, for some time. I didn't think this would like blow up like that. Like an actress goes, if, a, if maybe your pastor goes naked, you can tell me, I don't understand. But an actress does a nude photo and then, the country stops for like two weeks. I don't understand. I didn't get it myself, so I was also like, it was too much for me too. It was too much for me. Like, I, I was seeing like headlines, my own friend journalists writing all sorts of things, colleagues jumping in. I know most of them wanted to make headlines as well, but the kind of things I was reading, yeah, I was shocked myself. But it's okay, like that's why I said it's a new year. Let's but, just but move did, on. Did with it that. affects your relationship with family because your mother, your auntie came. I remember I spoke to your aunt, I spoke to your sister. Mm -hmm. You know, they came in to defend you. But I know deep down, them they were hurting as well. Did it? Did it break them down? I hear your mom couldn't speak because she was really, really worried. They were hurt because they they were also reading the kind of things that people were writing about me and then the insult, and that's why they jumped in. At the point, I told my sister to just stop. But they are the type that they won't stop. I'm the type that I can just ignore. But my kid's sister won't ignore. My family, they don't ignore. They will fight back. So that's just it. And like you said, um, you're asking about my family. This whole thing taught me a lot of lesson. And the most important thing is the people who love you are going to love you regardless, OK? So when this thing came out and people thought all sort of thing had happened and taking it out of context and all that, some of them, okay, some people, like, like what they wrote, obviously, they were behaving different, like not the people I know. But the people who love me, they cannot even find fault with me. And that's example, like my family, my, they are okay. I just come back home and then I receive gifts, yes. Did you have to go out of town because of this? Well, actually, like I said, it took me, it took me by surprise. I didn't see, um, I didn't see it making news at all. I knew fine, they would just say, whoa, 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 hey, and then maybe the next day it's over. But I was shocked. It, it was bringing different, different, diff a lot of different stories, and I didn't get it. Did colleagues in the industry reach out to you? Yes, some were reaching out to me, but my phone was ringing too much. Like, yes, I couldn't, like, because if I'm going to pick a record, I'm going to be repeating myself and texting and all that. So I just had to just stay away from the phone or 
this thing for a while. Yeah. Maybe the last question on this one, do you have any remorse? If you had, on hindsight, would you go through the same process? Would it be something that you wish never happened? No, if it didn't happen, what is happening to me now won't happen. Like, the lessons, the experience, the how I feel, I won't have that. How do you feel? I feel great. How do you feel when you're in the midst of your colleagues? Do you feel like some people are looking at you in a certain way? That's what I'm saying. If I didn't do that, I won't have people looking at me in a certain way and still feel okay. You understand? I mean, if, I didn't, if, if it didn't happen or I didn't do it, I won't be in a position where people are looking at me in some way and I'm still okay. I will have that fear that, okay, if tomorrow something comes, like I always have that, uh, you know, people are looking at me in some way. At a point, I was living my life like that. I couldn't walk the street, I couldn't walk the streets, I couldn't go where I wanted. My life was boring. And a friend told me, Christabel, you are just work, 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 work. All you know is act, 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 act. And I sat down one day and it was true. And I'm like, you know what, it's true. It's just makeup, sets, this, this. I don't even have a life. I don't have friends, I don't have this. So I took a break for a day. Like, a, there was a day I just took a break. Someone was bringing me a script and I'm like, no, I'm, t I'm going on a break. That was Eddie Nati. And he took the script back and that was when my break started. It started in the end um, of 2015. So it was like a, a long break for me knowing myself, being myself, doing other things apart from just being a star or being a celebrity. So you don't agree with people who say, oh, somebody cashed you, you've been jinxed, somebody said, and I read some accounts where they said you had, somebody had gone for a loan and to buy a car, blah, blah, blah. There were a lot of accounts. That's what I'm saying. So you, weren't, you don't think that it was something that had some spiritual connotation? No, I'm a child of God. Mm -hmm. Nothing like that. Think anybody in the industry did anything to you? That can't even affect me. Jesus has already died for me, so what has this jinx and curses? It can't affect me because the blood of Jesus works on my behalf every time. It's not also true that you went for a loan or somebody went for a loan and bought you a car, took their car back. You know, there was some... The hammer? Yes. The hammer, okay, let me see. I wanted to change it. I never even wanted to bring the story. I wanted to change it. And before, the, when I got the hammer, people, there were stories out there that someone bought me a hammer and all that. I wanted to change my car. Did story, you? you did a story, yes, yes. I just ignored because like I said, I don't like to go into details and talk. I wanted to get a new car and then um, it, I got it from a friend. I asked him that, okay, I want to buy, uh, I think a Touareg or an Infinity or something. And I told him this is the amount I have. And he's like, you know what, for our friendship, I'm going to give you the hammer for that amount. And give that's the hammer. the hammer, yes, for that amount. And I got it. So as soon as I got it, I met another friend. I'm going to register my car. And he says, oh, let me get it registered for you. I, changed, I was actually driving the hammer before. And I changed from blue to white. I changed the color, got the, the, regist yeah, the number plate done. It was just like, it happened like that for me. And I thank God it happened. But after two years, or I think a year or so, I just wanted to change cars because naturally I like to change. And in that period, when I, I took it back to him, he told me, okay, if you want to sell the car, it won't be fair to sell it to another person for a higher price. So you can just bring it back and then because he deals with cars. So I called him up that I want to change the hammer. If you want it, I can give it back to you. And he says, okay. So I gave him back to him. But he didn't have enough cash as I gave him to him back. He had a land. He had a land, so he gave me the land and some cash, and that was the deal. So I have the land now, which obviously is for my mom now, and then the, the, the cash, that's all. So you don't drive anymore, you don't have a car anymore? My mom bought me a different car. Like I said, yeah, just in the last period. But after that, I wasn't really interested in getting a car instantly, because I was like, just around, I wasn't really here, just taking road trips, and I wasn't really, Decide, decisive at the moment. So it was just uh, about a period last year, someone last year, my mom bought me a car, bought me a phone, like she just wanted me to just stay home and relax and all that. Yeah. But was that a mutual understanding? Because it looks like they said that's what brought about the whole confusion. How did it bring about the whole confusion? I could have even decided to still, I had the option of still driving it. Like, like I said, when this thing came out, I, it opened my eyes as well. I also saw how people think, how people perceive all because I'm just doing things I don't even know is going to, uh, like, yeah. Like, if I'm driving the hammer today and I'm not driving it tomorrow, 
I don't see how it's going to be like a big deal and loan and all these things I'm hearing and all that. But yeah. have you been able to heal, like the process? Because you see, you take you were taking road trips and all that. I'm sure it was a process of healing you and all the negativities that were that surround your personality or your brand. Have you been able to heal? No, I was just doing that to see other aspects of life, not just um, movie. Red carpet, makeup, like uh, I just wanted to do that to see how other people live. And obviously, I couldn't really do that in the place that people know me. I just go out and do it with local folks, live there, wake up, fetch water, mingle with kids, go to the market. Proud to this, people said, you, when you said you, you yeah. go to places where people don't know you, proud yeah. to this, you are in Togo or so. You are, Benin. yes, Benin, yes. which your grandmother. My grandma. My grandmother lives in Accra. So That's with? a different picture. Those are those are those were new friends I made. Because people said you were already behaving funnily when you went. There was this old lady you were with, and then you take a video, and the video sounded funny, looked funny, and all that. Yes, because they don't know me for that. But who is that? They are friends I made. Just like that. Yes. Yes. You traveled to Kotonu to or Benin to Yes, your because before then I'm um I was doing less tour Ghana. So when I go to the rurals, I even had a boy from Afajatu call me yesterday that people don't come to Afajatu anymore since we came there. No, I make some friends from the local folks and it's a different life from what I have here. So sometimes I just I just do that. That. And also you said a certain man had snatched you, you fell in love with a stranger, the stranger snatched you. Yes, and on that, on, that, um, on that thing, he didn't really snatch me. We met. What, is it true? Yeah, we met and then I went to his home, we, lay, we just stayed for a while and obviously I have work, I have work, I have family, I have things to come back to. And he says no, I'm like no. Let's get married. I'm like, no, I can't just get married like that. I need to come back home, you know, and I'm the type that... So you just moved to a place. So, so let's say you came here and you met a stranger. You fell in love with him instantly and you moved with him to his home. Is that what happened? It's just like I've come to Ghana. I'm just, I've come to Ghana and then I make a friend. I'm here for a while. Maybe I'm here for some months and I, I, I just make a friend and then I come to his home and we spend some time. You understand? You're looking at me like the, the, the story sounds strange. How strange, and that was the beginning of all the issues because that was not the beginning of what issues? The issue of you know before we saw the naked pictures and all that because I remember it was my colleague Ibi who spoke to you and I heard that mm -hmm. at the Ebo White play you were yes. all over the place jumping from one place to the other which was not normal of you because you come across as a very reserved person and oh. for them to have said that oh she was here smiling to everything oh. and it was like there was something you know wrong with you mentally. Really? What's wrong with smiling with to everything? Like, okay, because uh, it's better to be uptight. Yes, that's how we are fashioned to be. Celebrity, uptight. Don't speak to people. Even sometimes my mom tells me, hey, yeah, don't be too friendly, you're a star. That's what I was tired of because I, I saw the camera at age 17, right after school. And that's the life I've known till now. I've never been like, and normal, like outside or something. So that's what you're saying. So when I come and I just want to be normal and smile at you, even you that I'm smiling at you think it's not normal. That's the problem. You don't. You hire a celebrity. If I like, okay, on the normal and before, I'll say I can't do this interview, uh, Miss G. I can't do this interview because you called me just today. I'll say wait. Let me get back to you. I'm not going to pick your calls. Let me arrange some makeup artists. Let me get perfect before. But no, I'm here at lunch. You can come over. We can just do it simple. So without the airs, then there's something wrong. So who is something mentally wrong with right now? <laughs> I see. Yes. So let's, let's just embrace some change, you know, and give you... stars some chance to live. Mm. Were there times where you cried over this issue? What are the times when you broke down about Ooh. this issue? The last time I cried will not be because of this issue. I've cried before, but not because of this. I'm trying to remember the reason why. So it has got nothing to what? do with? It has got nothing um, to do with? Oh, the last time I cried... Did it have to do with this? No. Mm. 
No. And you're a very, very tough woman in this kind of society with all the people vilifying you left, right, centre, and you never cried, you never broke down, you never had regrets and all that. Then you, you were a very, very strong woman. No, like I said, <laughs> Jesus is Jesus. When you have Jesus, you know that it's a spirit. We live in the, we live in the spirit. All of these things, like uh, someone says you're a fool, you are mad, you are crazy, you don't know how to dress, letting that get into your spirit is a waste of time. Because at the end of the day, this flesh is nothing. It's just flesh. You understand? You used to go to church. I go to church. Go to church. Because the last time I knew you were going to church, we were, we were attending the same church. You used to go to that church? I still do. Yes, but I don't see you. Oh, first of all. Service been now, but I'll speak see. to you. Which of the services do you come to? Oh, actually, it's been a while I came there. I go to Action Chapel too okay. because when I was in Benin, I met. Um, I go to the Action Chapel in Benin because there was no charismatic church. Um, I just go to the Catholic church and I met someone who says, "Oh, your people have a church here." So I went there. I came back here and then I just continued. But my when you went to Daume, they said you had gone for some juju because you know that's the home of proper juju, like they say. You see, you see, you're, you're telling me things now, like they say, they say, the right. things people say. You don't know that Dahome, you know, even the name, Kotonu, Beni, yeah. they say that, you know, they have... I heard, I heard. Even when I was there, the pastors tell me that this place is this, this place is that. And I'm like, so how do you guys operate here? But I realized how they operate. It's like, it's prayers, it's prayers, it's prayers. You didn't go for juju the there. only thing I believe in is Jesus. Jesus is the true power. When you have Jesus, right, you don't, you don't... Uh, succumb to laws of like s s all this juju or what people think or what people, because at the end of the day nobody can help you that that's the truth the harsh truth is only Jesus can help you I experienced this uh, in reality when the atomic Fire atomic fire explosion. We were driving. We had, we had just gone to visit my brother from school in the eastern region, and we got to we almost got to Presec, and we, we we even ordered pizza, thinking that we we're almost in East Legon. Before we knew it, I saw some red flashlights, and we thought it was maybe the advertising boards. And the next thing, there were crowds of people running towards us, and I rolled down and asked them that was wrong, and they said gas explosion. We just rolled up. I pulled out the key. That was the only thing. I, before I knew it. I was with my mother and my sister for three hours. I didn't see my mother. I didn't see my sister. We all separated. Like they, should, they could have even told me that, oh, let's run together or something. At that moment, even my mother couldn't help me. If the, if, if the fire was real, my mom couldn't have helped. My sister couldn't have helped, even though they were my family. So there are some things that people can help you with. But in this life, you waking up on a daily, nobody can help you with that, with, with, with breath, of, breath of life. It's Jesus, it's God. So people waking up to make rules for people, to judge, to criticize, no, 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 no. It doesn't make sense. The greatest law is to love God with all your mind, your heart, your soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. That's, all our, that's our duty on earth. All of these things is just to pass time and wait for the judgment day, like the weaves and all of these things. That's a very no see me, and I won't yes. ask you about this thing. We are talking about 2018. Yes. What car do you drive now? What car? The car, my, my mom bought me a Corolla. Okay. Yes. And you're comfortable with that after driving a hammer for a very long time. A customized plate hammer. hammer. You don't know what's next. Yes. I can drive something else tomorrow. Yes. Anyway, 2018, that's a new year, new slate. I see you. I saw you at um, the Honorable Member of Parliament's party, Ken um, party. I'm seeing you here. You look bubbly. It's, it's been, like, for me, it's looks all new and I'm wondering what's up your sleeves for 2018 wow that only God can decide I just take it are you back uh, to movies are you going to you know be starring in films or you're just taking it cool and yeah just take it cool so when, we aren't supposed to be seeing you in movies anytime soon you might if it comes up like I said, um, God is in control of that. I wake up by the day and what comes up is what I do. But are jobs coming your way after the incidents that people called you for jobs? Yes. When I have time, I do it. I wrapped up a job last month, so okay. I hear a premiere somewhere this month or March or something. So, yeah. So Did the Ghana Actors Guild reach out to you because they kept saying that you didn't want to see them? 
They probably did, but I wasn't uh, available at the time, yes. So 2018 is a clean year. You said you'd be doing movies and all of that. You know, is there pressure on you to settle? No. 2018, we're living for God. Our whole life is for God. So whatever he, he you, calls us you, to do, that's how I am. But people don't know because, like, that's how I am. Like, I've always been like that, but I just don't talk about it. or when I have that. Ever had because a conversation. you don't ask me issues that but deal so with that. I'm not asking you about the Bible, but you, have, you preach more than. No, I'm preaching because it's got to do with what you're asking me. It's like you're asking me about juju. Have you ever asked me of juju and stuff? Yeah. So I have to tell you that no, idols are bullshit. Sorry. Mm. Yes. Is, is it like we're going to see you, you know, mount the pulpit anytime soon and become, you know, a preacher of the in word? The, 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 whatever God decides no, to but do. Maybe you desire so. It's not my desire, it's what God desires, like down there, I don't know. Because I didn't know you, I was going to be here this morning. I didn't plan it in my day, but it's happened, so that's how it is. Tell Ghanaian something. They've been longing to hear from you. Oh. They, don't, they don't know how to feel about what discussion we are having. So you tell them something, something that I've not asked you, something you know they want to hear. After all this while, after all the things that have gone round, the stories, the headlines, the blah, blah, blah. Pekasa. Tell them. Okay, my motherland, Ghanaians. Even the Nigerians too. Even the Nigerians too. Let me start with the Ghanaians. My, my, my Ghanaian family. I love you like I love my mom, you know. So I love Ghana. And Nigerians, I love you like I love my dad. So happy new year. And just do what you believe God has called you to do, okay? and be happy and be good. Like I said, love your neighbor as yourself. It's all about love and love God, because I love you too, and I'm here for you. What else do you want to know? Who took the pictures? Hey, that one, dear. Yeah. <laughs> That's the question people ask. Really? Whether you gave, you, saw, you know why? People said they don't know whether you were at a brick garden. Somebody said they saw you at a brick garden. You looked like you, there was something wrong with you. And so somebody was the one who gave us a clue that the pictures were taken at a brick garden. I don't know if it's true. So what are you asking now? The so pictures? Who, the so pictures was he at a brick garden? Those two things are um, confidential. I promised the person who took the not picture. The name. Is he a friend? You know. That's all I no, I promise that I'm not gonna so tell. Not gonna say, yeah, yeah. Gonna when I promise that I'm not gonna, I'm gonna keep something between you and I. That's Stick it. Yes. So you won't tell us the venue and the No, I can't do that. It's been great hanging out with you. I'm so so excited that I can see you because I was really worried, really worried about you. Even though you were not worried about it, maybe you should take the opportunity to apologize to your family about you know what happened because i felt they were worried about especially your little sister she could take a bullet for you she loves me so much i did an interview with her the way mm. she kept insisting on things yes i realized she could take a bullet for because you. she is that type like she can fight like her name is asantua hmm. Ekuya asantua okay so i'll take this opportunity to thank my family and my friends and my fans and everyone who has stuck out for me and who has been there for me May God bless you and bless everything you do. And may God also stand for you when everybody does not stand for you. Thank you very much.